Hello everyone, I'm back again with some new systems. I made these systems for future creations, but also for those who want to use the systems and make their own. In the future I'm planning on doing more vehicle creations and not just systems. If you have any suggestions of what I should make next, please let me know down in the comments. Now about these systems. They might need a small tutorial, so for those who want to use them, as they are somewhat complicated to integrate and customize. Alright, first I'm going to show you how to integrate the ballistic system into your creation. For this example, I just have this platform here. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to paste in the preset. You can move it to the side a little bit. And so here we have the weapon turret. We're just going to copy this and put it wherever we have planned to put it. Let's say right about there is good. This is obviously just an example, so you probably won't just be putting it on a plane, but just put it wherever on your creation that you want it. Next up, we're going to take the targeting system. Uh, it is optional, uh, but it's in the preset, so to allow you to test the system out. But for this case, we also want a targeting system. So this is also a showcase of how to implement the targeting system. And it is as simple as copy-pasting it in. Uh, the, the old platform we can simply remove. We don't need that. All right. So we make sure everything is merged. That looks good. So you're most likely not going to want to have the same turret nor the same weapon for all of your creations. So, for example, if you are ever to change the turret, it is as simple as it is as simple as changing to the turret that you would like. Let's say, what do we want? We want a rotary auto cannon. And it is a little bit bigger, so we're just going to have to resize this a little bit. So you can basically make any kind of turret that you want, you don't have to use the default by any means. Alright, making sure that's still welded to the yaw pivot. Uh, and this physics sensor right here doesn't matter where it is positioned, you can just place it as long as it is on the pitch pivot, which is the same pivot that the turret is going to be on. We'll take the rotary auto cannon, put it on there, and now we have our new weapon on here. Next step is to go into the microcontroller, and here you can see we have a lot of different settings. And this is to have it be really flexible and customizable. We'll go through all of these, starting with the weapon type. As you saw, we have changed to, for example, the rotary gun. So we go in, we open the list, and here we have rotary autocam. Next up is artillery mode. You can only use the artillery mode with either the battle cannon, artillery cannon, or the bertha cannon. It's not possible to do artillery mode with the other weapons because they do not have a long enough lifetime, which means they will be despawned before they can hit the ground. Next up, we have go idle when. So this chooses when the turret should go into idle mode. So for the first setting, go idle when never. That means the turret, when it does not have a target or when the target is out of range, is just going to keep pointing in the same direction. This might be useful if your target keeps getting out and in of range, and you don't want your turret to return to its idle state. The next setting is the no target. This is the default and recommended setting. This means that whenever the target is either out of range or the turret is not receiving a target, then it will go back to idle state. The idle state is simply a position that the turret goes into when it's not actively tracking something. And so if you have, for example, a tank and you don't want it to always point out to the side or the turrets on a battleship, you probably want the turrets to go back to default position when they don't have a target or when they are out of range. And so that's when you use the idle mode. We'll talk a little bit more about the idle mode settings later. 
Next up is reload state. So in the reload state, you have the different modes. The first setting is keep tracking. This means that the turret is not going to change its behavior when the reload input has been activated. This might be useful for a auto turret that does not need to go into a certain position to reload. The next setting is fixed yaw. This means that the yaw will go into a certain position to be able to reload. Some turrets can have that. The pitch will continue to track the target. The next setting, fixed pitch. It will do the same thing the yaw did, but on the pitch axis, which means it is going to continue to track on the yaw, but it will go to a certain position on the pitch. And the last one, fix yaw and pitch. This means that it will go to a set position when the reload input has been activated. All right, next setting, max aim error to fire. This is the accuracy that the turret needs to achieve to consider itself accurate enough to shoot. This is in degrees, so right now it is allowed to point within plus minus 5 degrees of the target and still shoot. This is mostly to prevent your turret from shooting when it is not facing the target yet. So the lower you take this number, the higher precision your turret is going to require before shooting. For fast targets, like on a rotary gun shooting down missiles, you might want this high. It's not always going to be facing the target perfectly. All right, next setting, turret speed. The turret speed is basically just a sensitivity multiplier. If you want your turret to be faster, you increase it. If you want it to be slower, you decrease it. For turret rings, you are likely going to want a much higher value as they require a much higher input to turn the same rate. If your turret will start to wobble, you likely have too high sensitivity. Note that too little weight on the turret pivots. And so what I mean by that is that the blue and yellow bodies here, the yaw and pitch pivot of the turret, if they are too light, the pivots are going to act weak and sometimes strangely. So if you're having issues with this and your sensitivity setting is not set too high, you might want to make your turret a little bit more heavy, as this will make the pivots work much better. And so that's the turret sensitivity. You basically don't need to move it unless you have a turret ring or if you want a slower turret. Next up is the max turret yaw speed. This is essentially the maximum output that the yaw pivot will be receiving. And so this is essentially for controlling your turret's maximum yaw speed. And the max turret pitch speed is the same thing as the yaw, but on the pitch axis. Turret max turn left. This is essentially how far from the forward position of your turret it is allowed to turn left. If you have it a 180 degrees on both the left, the turret max turn left and the turret max turn right, it will be able to turn 360 degrees without any issues. If you set it lower on either of these, for example, if, if there's something obstructing your turret, for example, on a ship where the hull might be in the way or anything else is in the way, this will essentially allow you to clamp how far the turret can move in every axis. And so you have maximum turn to the left, maximum turn to the right, maximum turn up and maximum turn down. On the next settings, we have reload yaw angle. This is the angle that the turret goes to when in reload mode, assuming that you have fixed yaw and pitch or fixed yaw, the same with the pitch. So set these angles at the position you want your turret to face when reloading. These numbers, all of these angle numbers are in degrees. And with these, it is positive to the right and positive upwards. On the next setting, we have idle yaw angle. This is the same thing as the reload yaw, but with the idle mode. The same on the pitch. Velocity predictions moving. To allow these systems to work in a nice and smooth way, I have added some smoothing to the values to make the turret more smooth. These values you can mostly leave alone. However, if you are experiencing a shaky turret, you might want to increase these as it might be as your target data is a bit noisy. Or, if you are using artillery mode, you are likely going to need to increase these values a lot. 
especially if you're, you and your target are moving. The acceleration prediction smoothing is the same thing, but with acceleration. This should be much bigger than the velocity prediction smoothing. And as I said, you most likely do not need to touch these, unless you are in artillery mode, and then you should have these be much higher. The lag compensation value is essentially accounting for the delay ticks caused by the different systems being used. If you are hitting behind the target consistently, then you might want to increase this. If you are hitting too much in front of the target, you might want to decrease this. You should not need to touch this as long as you are using my systems, as it is calibrated for those. So, on to the next setting. These three settings tell the system where the base physics sensor is to be able to tell exactly where the turret weapon is positioned. You most likely do not need to touch these values, but if you want a fully accurate system, or if you are having issues, you might want to change these. And so we have the offset to the right, forward and up, those being the positive axes. And so here you can see I've removed the turret just to show where the center of the turret is. And so how we measure this is we measure the distances on the forward, up and right axis that the physics sensor is located from the center of the turret. And so we start with the up axis. So we can just use a block, move it upwards until we are at the center of the turret in down to the right, and so you can see on the green numbers that we are 2.25 meters from the center, and if the physics sensor was above, as up is the plus, the number would be positive. But now the physics sensor is below the center, and so it should be negative. And so we enter minus 2.25 meters. All right, next up, we can measure the forwards. And so if we look here, we can see that the physics sensor is one block behind the center of the turret. And as forward is plus, then behind is minus. So minus 0.25, which is one block slain. And finally, we need to calibrate the right and left offset. And as you can see, the physics sensor is right underneath it. It is not offset to the right or the left. So we can leave that at zero in this case. And the last setting is the neutral turret weight compensation. This is a setting that you most likely do not need to use, but if you have a really heavy turret and you want that maximum precision, then you might want to tune this. And so here I have an example of a really heavy turret, except now it's just weight blocks, but it's simulating a heavy turret. If we take a look at the microcontroller, you can see turret weight offset 0.062. So what you do next, is you go into the microcontroller, you enter that number 0.0062, and now I've entered that value. As you can see, we still have a 0.001, which means that we need to increase it a little bit more. So we just add that 0.001 to the value we had previously, and continue to do that until it is completely at zero. I have finally reached zero, this means that the turret should now be completely neutralized. And so now the turret is not going to be pointing lower than it should when trying to reach the target. But this is still something that you usually do not need, but it's there in case you do. All right, that's the ballistic system done. Let's move on to the GPS system. The GPS system allows you to make your own custom missiles of any size. In the preset, you have the most basic missile you can make. And so you can build your own new custom missile upon this and look on it in case you're having trouble. The minimum parts that you need for a missile are fins, a booster, a physics sensor, the GPS missile system, the GPS missile system microcontroller, the radar for radar hybrid missiles that switch to radar mode when it sees the target is optional. The keep active block is also optional, but allows your missile to continue moving even if no player is loading that area. So it might be useful to put on long range missiles. The warhead is also technically optional, but you most likely want it if you want to explode anything. For the setup and tuning of the missile, it's mostly just trial and error, but it can get you started. The missile preset has the basic structure and connections that you might need to know. But if we look into the microcontroller, you have some settings here. 
First, we have the gain, which is essentially the sensitivity of the missile. The higher gain, the more the missile will try to turn when trying to reach the target. If you have too low gain, the missile might have issues reaching the target and might not turn. If you have the gain too high, then the missile might overmaneuver and stall. The control clamp controls the maximum output to the fins, which essentially makes sure the missile does not turn harder than it's able to without stalling. We will talk more about how to prevent stalling later. We will talk more about changing this value to prevent the missile from stalling later. So, the next setting is turnaround after miss delay. This setting is for when the missile sometimes might miss the target and can still try to hit the target again. The missile will wait this amount of ticks after missing the target before it's going to turn around and try to hit the target again. If you do not wish for the missile to try to return and hit the target again, you can just set this number really high. Next up, we have Guidance Start Delay. This is a delay after how long you have given the missile the coordinates, which should be the same time you launch the missile, the missile should start guiding. So if you want the missile to just fly straight for a bit before starting its guidance, you can increase this number. And remember, this timer starts when the missile receives coordinates. So if you do not want it to start before launching the missile, make sure that you, for example, enable the transceiver that the coordinates are being sent on when the missile is being launched to make sure that only then the missile will start the counter. The next setting is Guidance Path. This is essentially if you want your missile to make a parabolic arc moving a parabolic, bar a parabolic arc whilst going towards your target. If you are shooting at aerial targets, you most likely want direct or possibly low arc if you are shooting closely from the ground. But if you are shooting at other ground targets, or are shooting in an artillery style, or if you are shooting more of a ballistics type missile, you might want to have a higher arc. Next up, the physics sensor position from center. We have the right forward and up axes, and this is essentially the same as with the ballistic system, but now the center should be the center of rotation when the missile turns. Knowing where this center is might be hard, and therefore, the easiest way to get a rough approximation of where the center is, which usually works quite nicely, assuming that your missile fins are placed symmetrically around the center, which means the same amount from the front as back, and using both the front and back fins. If you are doing this, then it usually works to just copy the missile, paste it into a new creation, make sure to remove the start block, and see where the center of mass is. And so here you can see that the physics sensor is one block behind the center of mass, which we approximate to be our turning center. And so we go into the microcontroller and set the offset on the forward axis to be minus 0.25, as that is the length of one block. The physics sensor is not placed up or down or left or right from the turning center, so we do not need to change those. Next up, we have the extra prediction ticks. This essentially accounts for the delays in the different systems. If the missile is hitting behind the target, you might want to increase this value. If it, is, if it is hitting in front, you might want to decrease this value. The last setting should only be set to anything but zero when using a radar hybrid, which means that you are letting the radar take over the controls when at a certain distance, which should be set to about the same distance that the radar can start detecting the target. If you are not using a radar, as in a radar hybrid missile, this should be set to zero, as it will stop the missile guidance system and just let the radar take over. The last setting is control clamp and balance test. This test mode is something you should enable when tuning your missile, especially if it is an instable missile that needs to maneuver a lot. The test mode will start as soon as the missile receives coordinates, which means that the start timer will also start. The missile will fly straight forward for the start timer period, and for this period when it is trying to travel straight forward, you can see if your missile is weight balanced well. If it's going much upwards or downwards, you might want to balance your missile better to fly straight, as this can help with guidance and precision. After the start delay, the missile will start to turn as hard as it can to the right. For testing this, you can enable the targeting system, 
enter manual mode and lock the target whilst looking roughly 20 degrees upwards. When launching the missile, it can either start spiraling in a helix or make big circles. If it does this whilst your control clamp is set at 1, it means that your missile will never stall out. If this is the case, you do not need to set the clamp any lower than 1. However, if your missile starts to stall, then you should lower the control clamp value until it does not stall like this. Yeah, but it did have an explosive on it, right? Yeah. Isn't that supposed to go off? <laughs> well, I think it works pretty well. <laughs>